This is the day before the race. I am, my wits, uh, it's just white noise at this point. But the good news is, for you guys, today is the day we test launching this car. We've got all of these different electronics to try and simplify the process, so I'm not juggling and doing crazy stuff. Let's see what this thing can do. I have no idea. We have only hours before we have to load up and go on a trailer and then take it and compete, but I'm hoping that it ends up being something that we are tuning the car, adjust it, and then it just, does the rest. We are making this car as stock as possible, even though it is I'm in a car. Check this out. Horn button? No, I'm not that aggressive of a driver. You hear that? Oh. Line lock's working. If you want to do this real quick for the camera. So that's good. I'm going to go ahead and press the brake. And you're locked. Yep. I'm going to let go of the brake. You're good. Mm -hmm. I'm going to press the brake, hold my horn, and then let go. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. That's so sick. We also have, check this out, it's two and a half volts. It can tell how much strain. I'm putting on that shifter. If you need anything else, good old fashioned AM. And it goes one step further is that we have both the clutch and the brake pedals sensing us switches as well. Let's refine this car a little bit. Here is the key. We're gonna go ahead and turn it on. It turns on the car, it turns on fuel, it turns on the all-wheel drive, and then we can start it all from the key. I didn't want to start the car because that will actually start the car. <laughs> you can barely hear it, but line lock's working, right? Well, watch what happens when you turn the car on. Yeah. The all-wheel drive system turns on, you can hear it. Watch this blue button. It turns, line lock automatically turns the all wheel drive system off temporarily until the line lock's done. And then it allows all wheel drive to complete. I don't have to turn buttons on or off. I literally just have to press line lock, hold it, burn out, let go, and we're good. This is aluminum foil tape. So we use this on the race team. You put them over the weights so that the weights don't fall off like they just did. And we gotta rebalance stuff for the tape. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> Especially when you're, you're like on the track and your tires are hot as shit and uh, your wheels are just hot as shit, it's, it's, uh, it saves you a lot of time. What are you setting them to? Uh, we're going to start at 18. That's way too high still, but it's better than being 36. Andrew, uh, the one that has been helping wonderfully with the whole flat bottom, is, is young. He's new to this. And uh, he didn't know that JB Weld has the steel and then the hardener. He's like, I put the steel on there. And so I told him, no, 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 it requires its epoxy, it requires a combo. He started that and then he, he ended up doing it right, but he left the original part. And this matters because my carbon fiber cowl is not sticking to it. So we're gonna set the carbon fiber cowl aside, just throw the AEM dash in there and zip tie it. We've never been able to do this because the stock wheel wells were in there. Believe it or not, this is what peak performance looks like. You may not like it, but that's what it is. Yeah. This is a stock FD as far as that shot is concerned.
Of all the things, it's just a loose fitting from the repaired steering rack. We're gonna go ahead and take it back there and tighten it back up. But let's completely write that out because, oh my God, if you guys can hear that, as soon as it crosses the 5,000 RPM threshold, it just wakes right up. It's got tons of power and torque underneath that. But what I was testing was, okay, well, can I just get the wheels loose? And I can't. You guys know what that means? That means two steps. What are you thinking? Each knob could be like three different things. Yeah. But, and, and there's no set pattern to it. So yeah. like we might not even know what we're adjusting. Yeah. Pretty light on the rebound and medium in the compression in the front. Okay. And that's gonna help the car. That really helped the GTR. Yeah. And then the rebound control actually kind of helps with wheel hop. Oh, and okay. Then, and tire wind up. Yeah. So uh, what I want to do is put uh, the very like what we do with the GTR in here at least yeah. for our initial. Okay, the rear adjuster is easier to get to, so I don't think we have to take a rear one out. Okay. Just the front, both front ones, maybe. Okay. I just wiped my face off and I look, and it was just pure dirt. And I'm like, what? I, I'm not that dirty. Well, just having all the flat bottom off and everything just shot dirt all over me. Okay, so that's high speed something. Okay, that's good. Rebound. So if this is high speed rebound, it, when, if I loosen this, it should just pop right up. Oh, right? okay. Uh oh. Four. Five. Okay, so that was five. Okay. Let me write that down. Fuck. <laughs> I actually can't tell. But I'm assuming high speed is for rebound and the low speed. Like, and this is weird, like um, low speed, zero setting, full stiff, high speed, zero setting is all the way to the minus. What? Seven, eight. And then the rear, we're in the middle of the range, five, but then the compression I have pretty low, 25 out of 30. For tire pressure, I think I was gonna start you off at 12 in the rear and uh, 18 in the front. Okay. If you look at those videos, you can tell that the car's squatting hard, which it's supposed to, but I'm afraid of it rubbing the wheels. Well, the good news is, is that we actually checked the height of the lower control arms and the car was actually sitting low. So we're bringing up the car. Naturally, we need more space, so it's perfect. So we're bringing it up a little bit. So the lower control arms are flat and that means we have more, more cushion for the, more cushion for the pushing, whatever. <laughs> My brain's fried. I'm not used to that. <laughs> <laughs>